I'm Robin Clevett, and one of the most useful tools I've got in my arsenal is definitely this magnetic drill. Now, I started using magnetic drills so long ago, I can't remember, because often we get steels and we have to drill holes through them and that sort of stuff. And yes, I can get the steels sent in from the suppliers with the holes, but sometimes that adds to the lead times if they say, oh, it's gonna be another couple of days because we've got to drill it all. So quite often, I like to position the holes exactly where I want them and it might suit lengths of timber as they met over the top of the steel, for example. So I'm just about to drill this steel for wall plate bolts that are gonna bolt the plate down. Now, sometimes I actually nail the plates into the steel with a ballistic nail gun. So that's actually got a round of um, bullets, if you like, and they'll fire the nail through the timber and through the steel. But I quite like the um, accuracy of drilling and bolting. So this is the drill. It's not, an over, it's not an overly expensive drill. I think it only cost me around about 350 pounds when I bought it. Now how it operates is quite simple. It has a large electro type magnet on the bottom. And as you turn the magnet on, it's now held onto the steel, okay? Turn it off and it's sort of loose as a goose. Turn it on and it's rock solid. So the object is you're gonna position the drill, it's got, let me just show you the bit, if I turn it back here. So this is the bit, and it's like a pillar drill effectively. So it's got a rack and pinion, and you're basically just driving it up and down. Now the drill bits, the drill bits are particularly good because they cut, actually cut a groove, and then they knock a pellet out. And how that works is there's a spring-loaded pin in the cutter, and as you're driving in, that'll position, you position that pin on your point where you've marked it, and then you drive the cutter through, and it pushes it out. I'll show you that in a second. So here are a typical rotor brooch cutter, or a magnetic drill cutter. It's a typical cutter. And they do last and last and last, but they only last if you get the speed right, and you use some sort of cutting fluid, as you're drilling as well, keep the cutter cool. And they just last and last and last. So I'm, I'm using an M12 bolt through this steel. So I'm gonna drill a 14 mil hole, so two mil bigger. So I've got a 14 mil bit in there and we're just gonna drill all this through now. So the whole idea of this is the block on the bottom, which is the magnet, is operated by a switch, a separate switch, okay? So the key to this is position the point here over where you're gonna drill, turn on the magnet. So we'll position the thing, turn it on, and then it's there. And then what we need to do is just literally press the on button and let it do its work. So I'll get my um, oil, which is the cutting fluid. I'll have this ready. Now, the, the name of the game with this is, as you can see on the side, the speed selection. The smaller the bit, the faster the speed. And this will go up to something like 40 millimetres. And I've done a few of those. I've got some big cutters. And you really do need to go nice and slow. It takes a bit of time. But these ones are a walk in the park for this. Um, so we'll go for it.
So for the purpose of capturing this for you on camera, I've got this sort of guard slid in the up position, but this can actually slide right down and stop a lot of these filings and shavings from sort of getting towards you, if you like. I mean, it's really important. They got, they're super sharp, these. It's really important that you actually have um, gloves, eye protection and all the rest of it. It's just, you know, you, do, you really don't want any of this to capture in the eye. And also, um, you can also run an oil bottle on this drill, which you can turn on and off so it's auto feeding. But generally speaking, for these small stuff, like these little holes here, this is just everything you need really, just a little spray of this. It's just all about keeping the speed to where it should be. So that's the principle of it. Let's get another one done just behind us. So we slide it over. We line it up, we turn on the magnet, give it a little bit of spray if you like first. That's a funny colour, that one. and it takes seconds. It's such a nice job. Uh. I'm all tangled up. Huh? You can see how easy that is with this magnetic drill. And let me just get one of these little, little bits that it spits out. One I dropped, there's one over here. Hold on. So that is basically what it's cut out. So it doesn't drill all the material out, it just cuts out a channel, a groove, a slot if you like. And that's what comes out, it's brilliant. And um, it's a, such a satisfying tool to use. It's uh, so no, no effort, there's no effort. You're not sort of, you know, with a drill, trying to drill really, really hard and blunting bits and all the rest of it. It's amazing. I remember the first time I used one, as I say, probably 20 years ago. Uh, more than that, in fact. Yeah, I was only about 21, 22 on the loft conversion. So that would have been in 91, 92. Remember having one then, and it was bigger than that. Um, one thing I might say, incidentally, it's really important that we sometimes drill beams upside down. So if you've got a steel beam above you and you're drilling into the bottom of it, you use that. Um, and it comes with a strap, and you have to strap the thing up. So first thing you do is hold it, magnetize it, strap it, because if the power is killed for any reason, if the, something trips or the power is killed, that will fall off that steel. And I know it has happened to a really good mate of mine. It was the last hole he was drilling as well. He was using upside down, drilling out of steel. And he'd set it up, he thought, it's my last one. He stepped down to get his fluid, caught the cable which accidentally pulled the plug and it killed the power and it hit him on the shoulder. Uh, fortunately it wasn't too far that it had fallen onto him so you don't want that crashing down onto your, uh, onto your shoulder. Anyway it's a brilliant tool I'm just going to get on and finish this beam. I've got a couple of others to do as well. Um, try one. <laughs>